Okay, so thanks again, Debbie. Um, and welcome everybody. For those of you who don't know me, like Debbie said, I'm Catherine Murphy, and I have had the pleasure of serving on the program support team as the science coordinator since February of this year. Um, despite all of the obvious logistical challenges over the last few months, you all have made an incredible effort to attend these virtual meetings and to actively advance the collaborative program. So on behalf of the program support team, I'd like to thank each of you for your contributions and commitment to the planning process that has culminated in our draft science and adaptive management plan. Um, throughout this symposium, all three days, we'll try to share with you some of the various ways that we hope that you'll engage with the plan. Um, but first, I'd like to give you an overview of the process that it describes. All right, so a lot of you might be wondering, why does this collaborative program need a science and adaptive management process? And the answer to that question is that the process describes all of the ways in which we can use science to inform adaptive management. Um, because at each step along the way of the, the classical adaptive management cycle, there exist opportunities to do things like innovate and improve the methods that we're, we're using, or more importantly, to tailor the steps of the AM cycle to the needs of this program and this ecosystem, because as you're all well aware, um, no two collaborative programs and no two systems are alike. And the essence of an adaptive approach is understanding that the point of all of this is to make meaningful progress with each iteration of the cycle. Um, the keys to success, therefore, are number one, being able to de define what meaningful is in the context of your system, and number two, knowing the direction in which progress is to be made. And for that, we have a mission statement. And Debbie has already covered the mission statement, but uh, this particular statement was revised in 2019, and you'll be seeing a lot more of it over the next few months. So you should become very familiar with it and its importance to the science and adaptive management process. Um, please don't think of this statement as a perfunctory one or some kind of placeholder because it is much more than that. This mission statement is the primary guiding principle on which this program's actions are based. And as such, it is the compass to which all of the program's plans will align. Um, that being said, all of the guiding principles that we'll talk about today for the collaborative program, as well as the program's plans and its processes should be subjected to routine review to ensure that they're appropriate, sufficient, and representative of the needs within the program area. All right, the classic strategic planning um, process involves a hierarchy of clearly defined goals, objectives, and strategies. Um, and to avoid confusion, uh, a little bit of confusion that we've had in the past, I believe that everyone should become familiar with the following definitions uh, for each of these elements. Um, some people treat these, these elements as synonymous, but they have very specific definitions and we need to clarify that. Uh, so I'll just go over them briefly. A goal is a broad statement about a desired outcome in support of the mission. An objective defines specific and measurable targets for successfully achieving a goal. This is key. Um, and a strategy describes the methods and resources needed to accomplish an objective. So you have a clear hierarchy of, uh, of guiding principles here. Um, in support of the collaborative program's mission, seven program goals were developed. The first five are specific to the five listed species in the MRG, and the last two are more general system level goals. As far as the objectives and strategies, um, the the, the objectives and strategies to achieve the program's goals are currently under develop, development, and uh, each of you will have an opportunity to provide input on them during an objectives workshop that we're, that we're planning and scheduling for sometime in January or February of 2021. So please keep an eye out for an email to that effect, and you'll be getting a pre-workshop survey in which you can review the preliminary objectives that we've, we've come up with and make any comments on them before the before the workshop. And we encourage your participation in that. 
All right, so many of you have already seen the draft science and adaptive management plan, which is up for approval by the executive committee later this month, and we hope that it, it goes through so that we can start implementing this plan. Uh, the plan outlines, like I said, a process which supports the collaborative program state admission. It organizes its guiding principles strategically using that hierarchy that I just showed you. And it restructures scientific and administrative tasks in a way that enables them to work synergistically. Uh, in addition, the plan establishes new tools that will help link ideas, track progress, make informed decisions, and improve communication within and external to the program, which, which Debbie also mentioned earlier. Um, finally, by documenting, and this is the most important part in my opinion, by documenting evidence-based recommendations, decisions, and results, the science and adaptive management process ensures that iterative learning will occur whether or not a recommended management action um, was feasible in a given year. And so specific to our program, um, understanding that the number and variety of management alternatives for our system may be very restrictive and usually is uh, in many situations. The act of keeping detailed records of our learning process will allow us to identify opportunities for adjustment when they arise. And this is so important. Um, if, there's, if there's very little room <laughs> for adjustment, we need to be able to pinpoint where those, those opportunities exist for the system. All right, so we have the science and adaptive management plan, and we also have what's called a long-term plan. And um, as I mentioned already, the S and AM plan describes the collaborative programs process for using science to inform adaptive management. But the process is only one side of a coin. Um, the long-term plan currently being developed organizes the program's scientific and administrative activities into periodic work plans that are aligned with the guiding principles and therefore supporting the mission. And this is achieved primarily through the use of the adaptive management database, which is a tool that Shay Howland will tell you a little bit about later this morning. Um, together, process planning and action planning in service of the guiding principles will foster a more adaptive collaborative program. And that's, that was really our goal here. So I hope that with this context about the program's new planning structure, you'll start to think of ways that you can engage, uh, especially as you navigate through the science symposium this week. I can't talk about planning without thinking about the A-team because I'm a child of the 80s. Um, so I think that we could all use a little positivity these days and uh, I, always, I always like that show. Um, at this point, I can take a few questions if anyone typed them into the chat. Or if you'd rather talk at length with me about anything that I've presented, you can feel free to send me an email if you prefer and it's on the screen now. 